Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Tuesday, August 25th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So today we're gonna look at some clarification from Governor Mike DeWine on his sports order for the fall. Plus there's a kind of change of plans for Sylvania City Schools and a whole lot more. But as always, before we get too deep into anything, let me get you updated on the latest coronavirus data. On Tuesday, there were 844 new cases reported, and this is compared to the 21-day average of 1,019. There were 10 deaths noted with the 21-day average coming in at 20. Tuesday also brought 97 new hospitalizations, which is above the average of 87, and ICU admissions stayed right on average with 15 reported since yesterday. Governor Mike DeWine also updated his list of counties, ranking them from those with the most cases per 100,000 people to the least. Locally, Sandusky dropped down to 10 after previously being in the ninth spot, and Henry unfortunately jumped all the way up to number four with 159 cases per 100,000. So something we'll definitely keep a bit of an eye on. Plus, DeWine took some time today to clarify a few things about the state's recent order allowing both contact and non-contact sports to continue this fall. The main focus was on spectator limitations, so let's take a look at some of those. For outdoor venues, the limit is either 1,500 individuals or 15% of fixed seated capacity, whichever one of those is lower. And for indoor sports venues, that limit is the lesser of either 300 individuals or again, 15% of fixed seated capacity. Ideally, DeWine said the spectator limit would enable at least two and maybe up to four family members to attend a game, provided that the venue is large enough to allow at least six feet of social distancing between groups. And under the orders of variance provision, school leaders can request a higher spectator limit by submitting a plan to their local health department and the Ohio Department of Health, explaining why a different capacity is needed and how social distancing will be accomplished. But if they do plan to submit this sort of request, Wine said school leaders should consider the following. Is a variance needed for a home and away family members to attend? Can everyone be socially distanced? And can the home school prevent the requested number of spectators from congregating? And that variance can't be used to just try and expand spectators from beyond family members of both teams and the home band and other people who might be performing at the event. And the leagues and conferences in our area have released their revised high school football schedules, although they still face somewhat of an unknown season. The Ohio High School Athletic Association sent letters to schools on August 7th explaining that there will be a six-game season for all schools, which was set to begin yesterday. All schools will be eligible for the postseason, which is slated to begin on October 9th, with the state finals to be held on Saturday, November 21st, and no later than that. For a look at all of those schedules, we have that up on our website right now, which is WTOL.com. And while we're talking about our schools, Let's take a look at what happened with Sylvania City Schools last night. In a sudden shift of plans, the administration has decided to begin on a hybrid learning model for all students. The goal for the district was to have everyone back in person, and earlier this month, the plan changed to have in-person learning for elementary students only and hybrid for grades 6 through 12. But now, all of that is out the window after leaders found out school buildings aren't as prepared as they were led to believe. According to a letter sent to parents, the school board was given specific information that confirmed safety measures had been put in place preparing classrooms for a safe return under a green plan. But Superintendent Dr. Veronica Motley said when she visited the schools personally, she noted a lack of signage and sanitation, as well as the inability for most classrooms to properly social distance, calling the lack of preparation unacceptable. The letter said that these issues led Motley and the school board to take action and make some unspecified personnel changes. So because of all of the reasons I just mentioned, Sylvania will be starting off on a hybrid model for all students. And if we get any more information on that and if anything else changes, we will be sure to let you know right here on our website and on air. So stay tuned. And for those of you who have a student learning remote, but you still have to go to work, this is something good to know. Yesterday, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine announced that a temporary pandemic license could now be issued to child care providers, enabling them to take care of school-aged children during the school day. The program's designed to ensure students learning remotely have a safe place to go during their normal school hours if their parents have to go into work. 
And these providers will receive funding to cover the cost of care for economically eligible children. Plus, the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services is set to launch a new temporary pandemic school age child care license. So places like churches, rec centers, and businesses can apply. And if they are approved, they too can provide care to kids during the regular school day. So keep that in mind, something to look into if you run a daycare or if you have a kid who needs some place to go during the school day. And even though the temperatures are still hot, these lattes are hotter. And it's okay, I hate that joke too, it's fine. Starbucks came out with its fall menu today, including the famous latte and the pumpkin cream cold brew, along with a number of interesting pumpkin-themed goodies from its bakery. This is actually the earliest the menu has been released, which I think is their way of throwing us a bone during this insane year. And while this may feel early, Dunkin' actually released its fall menu last week, which includes its pumpkin spice latte, along with some brand new original drink and snack options. And okay, I'm not gonna lie, I did treat myself to one of those pumpkin cold brews today, but what I'm really more interested in is what local coffee shops are doing for the fall. Now, the ones that I reached out to haven't released their fall menu yet, but if you have a favorite that I should know about, please drop them in the comments Comments, send me an email at jstrock at wtol.com because I want to put together a list of all the fun fall drinks that are going on at these local shops. So let me know. We can take a pumpkin spice tour of the 419. And before I go on a slightly more serious note, let's take a look at what's ahead for day two of the Republican National Convention tonight. So the theme for the evening will be land of opportunity with speakers planning to highlight Trump's policies on trade, abortion, and the opioid crisis. Two of the president's children, Eric Trump and Tiffany Trump, are scheduled along with a number of other supporters of President Trump, including those in the political sphere and just everyday Americans. But here are some of the main events. Now, the president appeared frequently during the first day of his party's convention, and while he's expected to make an appearance during prime time tonight, those exact details haven't been released. And another key speaker will be First Lady Melania Trump, and she is said to give the marquee address from the Rose Garden. She has focused on anti-bullying initiatives during her tenure in the White House, so she may offer one of the convention's most positive addresses. Plus, we'll hear from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, another Republican who's being closely watched for signs of future political aspirations. His decision to speak at the convention comes with some condemnation for breaking decades of precedent, keeping Secretaries of State from partaking in over partisan politics. But the State Department has countered that by saying Pompeo will be speaking in his own personal capacity and not as a U.S. official. We will be streaming this again on WTOL.com and on our Facebook page, so check that out if you're interested. It starts at 8.30 p.m. again, and it should go until around 11. But that is all I have for you today. You can catch us nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. And if you want to keep getting these daily updates, make sure you like the video and you subscribe to our channel. You'll get a little alert to your phone. It'll tell you when I hop on here. But with all of that being said, I hope you have a very happy Tuesday.